today we're going to show you how to make a motion graphics intro using After Effects. Well, I'm going to show you. Rachel's just going to... Before we get started, we really want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring this channel. By now, you probably know that it's an all-in-one platform for your website, your online store, your blog, your portfolio, whatever it is that you may have. And we use it across three of our websites. In fact, we just updated our Mango Street Lab website with a completely new template and it was super easy to do. Everything about the process was so easy. So we definitely recommend anyone who wants a website to check out Squarespace. They have award-winning designer templates and customer support that's available 24 seven. So if you ever get stuck, they're there to help you out. To get 10% off your first order, go to squarespace.com slash mango street and use the promo code mango street at checkout. In this tutorial, we'll cover some intermediate techniques in After Effects, such as motion tracking, the 3D camera tracker, and rotoscoping. If you've never used After Effects before, check out our previous tutorial on motion graphics now. You can also check out sites like videohive.net for After Effects templates if you don't want to deal with all of the keyframing that we'll be doing. So I have a few clips that Rachel and I went out and shot for an intro, and I dropped them into After Effects. I also grabbed an upbeat music track that we want to use, and I have it all dropped into a new After Effects composition. In the first shot, I'm going to add this line effect. It's animating out from the boot, but it's also tracked into the scene. So in order to have the line appear like it's sticking to that place in, in space, right by the boot, we'll use motion tracking. I'm going to find the spot where her shoe hits the ground. The 10th frame looks good. Now I'll select the layer with our footage. Go over to the tracker tab or go to window tracker. Then click track motion. I'm going to move this tracker box to the tip of her boot. You want an area that has a good amount of contrast from the background. And in this case, this spot should work well. We'll track forward in time by clicking the right arrow. All right, now let's create a null object. You can think of a null object as a layer that lets you control other layers and store information. So in this case, we'll have it store the tracking position information and link our line graphic to that information. So we'll click edit target and select the null object we just created. Now click apply, click OK. Now if you hit the U key, you can see it copied all the tracking information to this null object. I'm going to go ahead and rename that shoe tracker. Now let's draw on our line graphic. Select the pen tool by hitting G on your keyboard. Hit F2 to ensure no other layers are selected. Now we can start drawing. If you click and drag, you can create bezier handles, which allow you to make curved lines. You can then hit V to switch to the selection tool and drag your points until you're happy with the results. Now I'll click this pick whip icon and drag it to our null object. This sticks the graphic into the scene. Now I want to animate the path so it looks like it's radiating out from the boot. I'll double tap the U key, click the stopwatch next to path, and then move that keyframe forward a few frames. Now back on the 10th frame, I'll make the path smaller. Now let's also animate the opacity. Option T on the keyboard will create an opacity keyframe. I'll change the value to 70% and then option right arrow to move the keyframe over about three frames. Now I'll type in 0%. Scrubbing through, we can see that it now animates on. Let's duplicate the shape layer. I'm going to adjust the path so it's a little larger than the inside arc. All right, now we have both lines animating on. All that work for an eight frame animation. Next, we have a clip of me animating up over our shot of Rachel and lines animating on the concrete. I'll get to the transition in a minute, but first let's work on these lines. Since I want them to follow along the pavement in 3D space, we'll use the 3D camera tracker. So back in our tracker window, click track camera. It's going to analyze the footage and then try to figure out how the camera moves and then recreate that move with software. This then allows us to create points in 3D space that should appear to stick to our scene. Once it's done solving the camera, you'll get a bunch of colorful points in your scene. If we hover our mouse over them, it will triangulate the points and show a target of the plane it will create. We want the plane to run along the ground, so 
this set of points will do the trick. Let's right click and select create solid and a camera. Now this solid is a little small, so I'm going to scale it up a good bit. Now using the pen tool, I'm going to cut the shape of a line with an arrow. It's all right if it's a little sloppy because we can adjust it in just a minute. Now if you hit Command Shift Y, you can change the color of your solid to be whatever you want. I'm going to choose white. Once you're happy with what you have, it's time to animate it on. Click the M key to bring up your mask and click the stopwatch next to mask path. I'm going to move it forward 8 frames or so. Using the selection tool, you can highlight multiple points on your path and move them however you'd like. So I'm going to move them back toward the starting point. Now scrubbing through, we can watch it animate on. I also want to add an accent line, so I'll just duplicate the layer and adjust the mask. Just adjust the color and you'll be all set. All right, let's go back to transitioning this clip on. So in order to make it look like glitchy film, we have a few things going on here. I want the skating shot to come in on the 18th frame, so I'll just extend my footage to the left. Your 3D camera tracker from earlier may ask you to reanalyze the footage, and you can go ahead and do that. First, in the effects and presets panel, let's get the motion tile effect. I'll change the tile width to 33. I'll move ahead about five frames and move that back up to 100. I also want to change the output height to around 300. Now let's animate this up from the bottom. Option P to add a position keyframe, and then option right arrow to move it forward. About eight frames should be fine. I'm also going to enable motion blur for this layer by clicking this icon. Cool, now that that's done, I just want to add a little extra glitchiness to it. I found a screen glitch file that I'll link to in the description. Just bring that into your project. It's only 720p, so let's scale it up to 150% so it matches our composition. Then we'll pre-compose it by hitting Command Shift C. Select Move All Attributes into the new composition and click OK. And click the eyeball to turn it invisible and the speaker icon to mute it. The reason I'm pre-composing it is because I found the displacement plugin wasn't taking into account our scale increase of the layer unless it was nested inside another composition. If that's confusing, don't worry about it for now. Just trust me that it works. All right, now I'm gonna create an adjustment layer to add the glitch. We want the adjustment layer to go on top of everything we want it to affect. In the Effects of Presets panel, I'll add the Displacement map. For the map layer, let's select our Screen Glitch Precomp. For Max Horizontal Displacement, I'll choose 10, and for Vertical Displacement, I'll choose 50. The higher the number, the more extreme the glitch, so play around with it until you get something you like. I only want the displacement to last about 5 frames or so, so I'll trim the layer accordingly. In this next shot, I want to reinforce the glitchy feel by having these crosshairs jump around. This is way simpler than any of the last few techniques. I'll hit Command T for the text tool, type in the plus sign, and voila. I also change the blend mode to soft light. Just place it anywhere on the screen you'd like. Hit Option P and Option S to make both position and scale keyframes. Now I'm going to move forward to time the move with the beat of the music. With the music track selected, you can double tap L to show the waveform. Look for the spikes in the waveform to help you identify your beat. Now I'll just move the position of the crosshair and scale it down a little. I'll highlight all four keyframes right click and select toggle hold keyframe. This means that the position and scale won't move until it crosses another keyframe, which helps contribute to the jumpiness of this overall effect. For the next shot, I did another motion track similar to what we did in the boot in the first shot, so I won't go over that again. And same with this transition here, you can copy and paste your previous transition settings to these layers. The next thing I wanna show you is rotoscoping, which is essentially frame by frame masking. I want to add a graphic behind Rachel as she walks. So to do this, select your footage 
and hit Command D to duplicate it. On your duplicate copy, double click it to open it in the layer panel. Now select the Roto Brush tool. We can adjust the size of our brush by holding Command and clicking and dragging up or down. Now I'm just going to start painting the brush over Rachel and After Effects is going to try to identify the edges of what it thinks we want our masks to be. When the tool selects something you don't want to be in the mask, just hold Option and paint it away. We'll keep painting until we get just Rachel masked out the best we can. Now I'm going to move forward frame by frame, watching to see how well the Roto brush identifies the edges as Rachel walks, and I'll make any necessary adjustments before moving on to the next frame. Now this is a terribly painstaking process, but it adds that little extra oomph to help your project stand out. Once we're happy with the mask on each frame, I'm going to select the Refine Edge tool and paint over the edges of my mask. This is great for hair especially and other areas where the Roto brush just sucks. The white areas are parts that it will keep for your mask, so sometimes it goes a little overboard. Just click Option and paint away any spots that don't belong in your mask. You can adjust the settings in your effects panel of both your Roto brush mat and your Refine Edge mat. Usually I keep the feather pretty low or off and turn reduce chatter up as needed if the mask appears a little jittery. Now we can add whatever we want in between our roto layer and the original footage. I just used the pen tool to create an X and then animated that on using trim paths. That about does it for this intro. I just transitioned to our photo with our logo animating in and then out to reveal our tagline. I also added an adjustment layer for the whole comp and I used Lumetri color and loaded my Wicker Park LUT to the creative section of that plugin. You can pick up our LUTs at mangostreetlab.com. Now I also found a photo of some lens dust and used the overlay blend mode with the opacity set to 40%. I also created an ellipse in the middle, subtracted it, and feathered it out a ton. So this vignettes the footage a little and makes it so the dust only appears around the edges of the frame. All right, anyways, I hope you found this helpful. Please leave any questions you may have in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Leave any questions you might have in the comments. I know I sure have a lot. And we'll see you next week.